Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel real quick. I want to talk about, um, uh, now, well, this is a Chrysler 300, but what I'm going to talk about applies to anything with a 3.6 in it. Now, especially the early built 3.6. If you're chasing misfire, the problem is very intermittent. Uh, there's a case study out. Uh, this beat me up a while back. There's a case study out on uh, this, uh, this crank sensor right here. Let me show you all something. This is a new one, by the way. I'm opening it up. This is a crank sensor. Now, what they want you to do, or what they wanted us to do, how I ended up uh, repairing the one I had, um, is the build dates on these things. So what you have to do is look at the build date. If it falls bes between uh, certain parameters, they want you to get rid of this, uh, replace it with a new one, okay? They, they have been, apparently been redesigned and re uh, rebuilt and redesigned. So this case study, I'm gonna try to find the uh, information and post it up. Uh, I'm not sure I can, but I'm going to do it anyway for my subscribers because I don't leave nothing for my subscribers. Well, anyway, uh, like I say, is that we're chasing a misfire and I'm going to put this on and go drive the car and find out exactly what's going on. Be careful when you erase those uh, fault codes and trying to look and see if the car misfire because this thing called adapter numerator got to you got to reach that stage before misfire counter will even start counting again. So uh, try to make your repair and then go drive it without erasing the fault codes because you really don't want to clear the memory yet until um, you sure the car is fixed. And then you clear it and then you go drive it and see if it returns. That's how you verify if it's repaired or not. All right. So let me get this crank sensor on and I get back with y'all, man. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I have the car in the air now. Let's find the crank sensor. As you know, crank sensor monitors uh, flywheel revolution uh, is, should be somewhere around the flywheel area because it's going to detect how fast the flywheel is spinning. And that looks like it right there. Y'all see that? So it is essentially held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. All right, so let's get the connector off. Let's get the connector off. That looks like a 10 millimeter bolt. So I'm gonna grab my electric drill, make this process a little faster, and we're gonna we're gonna unscrew the 10 millimeter bolt so we can gain access to the crank sensor. All right, and it's not that bad to do. Just be careful, you know, if the car hot and you might have to wiggle it like I'm having to do now to get it out. And there you go. Okay, so this is the old model that happens to fall inside of that build date Chrysler was talking about. Now I'm going to go back in with this new one and then I'm going to essentially... I'm going to see if the misfire steer there with the fault code or with without erasing it first. Remember I told you uh, be careful erasing the fault codes uh, too early because you, then you will have to run adaptive numerator again. So I'm going to put that in and go drive it. If the misfire is gone, I would then erase the fault code, erase the memory, reset the adaptive memory and deliver the car. And that would be a wrap. OK, I just want to give you all a heads up. Um, there's a batch of these out there that uh, was built wrong, I guess, the early built models, okay? So be careful when you're dealing with misfire on them. It could very well be your crank sensor, all right? So thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Let me get this crank sensor put in.